Hello, I'm Christine. I've got mask lines on my face because I just got back from walking the dog. I haven't gotten a haircut since November 1st, 2019. And I've been working on building the foundations of my third novel. My first novel is called Again But Better. It's out now in hardcover and paperback where there's a bonus scene and a pink cover. And my second novel, Better Together, is less than 48 days out from publication. It's very, very exciting. When I first started it my concept was basically like let's say the idea of the parent trap and what if those girls were coming into adulthood how would that go it's a rom-com drum about how having divorced parents affects the way you view the world it's a comedy it's got romance and it's out june 1st it's available for pre-order now and i'll leave a link at the very top of the description you can go to christinemercio.com to get any of this stuff natasha just updated my website I can't believe my second book is coming out so soon like i can't believe it they just started recording the audiobook so this is episode two of book writing season three. We're not like fully done with season two, but we've moved into season three because I'm working on my third book. I have to finish the outline for book three by the end of June. We gotta get rocking on that. Episode one, I asked you guys what type of book writing video you liked better, the season one type or the season two type. And I feel like in YouTube, there is a pretty even split for both types. For this season of book writing, I'm gonna, you know, probably end up doing a mixture of both. Right now I'm not drafting, so it's easier to do it this way than to follow me around sort of vlog, but don't worry. Those aren't like permanently gone. I feel like when I'm in drafting mode, those are going to be easier. I'm about to ask y'all on Instagram to send in some questions so that we can include your beautiful faces in this video. If you're not following me on Instagram, I'm at xteenmay. I'd love to interact with you up in there. I've been getting really excited about book three. I had a really great brainstorm day. And as usual, this beautiful brainstorm day came in a morning where I didn't put on a podcast. I just sat with the quiet and my thoughts. It started actually at night. That's a lie. It started at night when I was in the shower and I didn't bring a book. I just gotta like cut out all my forms of entertainment for stuff to start coming to me and my brain just like sitting with itself comes up with all these exciting ideas. So I was in the shower and I thought of a first sentence. Something that really bugged me when I was writing Better Together was that like I was on a deadline and I was forced to move forward obviously without feeling like I had my perfect first sentence. And that bugged me all the way through. Like I would go back over and over again and I just never hit like the perfect first sentence. Like I'm happy with my first sentence now. It's weirdly relevant, even though I wrote it before. <laughs> I wrote it before the whole pandemic. The first sentence is I'm almost done living on pause. It read very differently by the time, you know, I was editing the final draft. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Um, but that wasn't my first first sentence. My first first sentence was just a sentence because I was like, you have to keep going. Get the fuck on with it. I want to be happy with my first sentence. Even if it doesn't end up being my first sentence in the end, it makes me feel so much more confident in the tone of the book and my excitement level to keep going is so much stronger when I feel confident in that first fucking sentence. It's really important to me. I think it's really important to a lot of readers, maybe even subconsciously, that you get excited by that first sentence. We're better together. I tried like 50,000 first sentences there and I finally cut out the first three paragraphs and just started on this I'm almost done living on pause because that was just like th the first sentence three paragraphs down and I was like this works. For book three, I want to get that nailed down. And I got out of the shower and started writing because you gotta strike when the iron's hot, as the ancient saying goes. I wrote a couple paragraphs. And then the next day I woke up and I was totally inspired and excited all day. So again, I didn't put on a podcast in the morning. I didn't put on a show while I was eating. I let my brain percolate with these ideas and I got lost in it. And I was forming my characters and I wrote down like the entire breakdown of how everything's going to go basically like the big story beats because like these story beats are going to happen and I know they're going to happen so I want to get them down so I know when I'm carving out my characters arc how they're gonna react to these certain beats so I got those all down and I got like the main love interest and the lead and then there are around six other characters that are pretty present throughout most of the book and so I've been drawing like the brainstorm webs for them figuring out what they look like and what they do and what they want what their motivations are in life and all this sorts of stuff it's been really fun <laughs> I haven't actually like sat down with the synopsis yet but I have pages and pages of stuff down in my notebook and I know like the just of who these characters are. And of course I'm gonna dig deeper once I start writing, but it's really nice to know what I know. I've also been using my my write notebook from Nadine that I use to kick off my Better Together brainstorming. This is like my more detailed, I have like day by day, cause a lot of the story takes place in a certain 
amount of consecutive days. Um, of course, there's like the beginning and then the consecutive days and then the end. I'm very excited about this story. I can't wait to start writing once I feel like I've fleshed out the lead enough. I'm pretty close, like I could start writing now, but I kind of want to just like let things sit a little longer. It depends what will strike me in the next couple days. Let's see if you guys sent in any questions. How do you narrow down all of your ideas that you want to put into your book? Whenever I try to write, I feel like I have a lot of great ideas or moments that I want to put in and capture but they definitely don't all go together. That's such a great question. In my first book, and I think in the second book too, you know, what I do is end up writing those ideas in and then during the editing process is when I will end up editing them out if they don't work. I would say just go for it and input those ideas if you think they're gonna be fun to write. Because you never know what you're gonna learn about your character by writing that idea in. And what you're gonna learn about like the other characters interacting with your main character or just how it's going to inspire you to figure out other aspects of your story. You're gonna have fun, you're probably gonna be inspired to keep writing after that, you're gonna figure out in the next couple drafts what's working, what's not working. That's honestly how I got through my writer's block during Better Together when I was stuck on the first act. Like I was going point by point in my outline to try and get the book done rather than like going where I wanted to go with the story. Like I'd have an idea, I'd be like, oh, that would be super fun, but that's not what I had planned out. And I just wasn't writing those speeds. And then one day I was just like, fuck this outline. I'm gonna write this because I want this to happen. I think it'd be super fun. So I did. And I wrote like a bunch of different point of views for different areas of these stories just for shits and giggles. That's when I started really rocking and rolling, when I just like let myself be free there. And that's why like the second draft had like these random chapters from other people's points of view, but those random chapters helped me keep going. And even though they're not in it anymore, those chapters, they, Hell, and I had so many side tangents in A Gamba Better because I did just let myself run wild. And that's why I had so much fun writing that book. Uh, I've been watching you for years and I've read uh, Again But Better and then of course I plan on reading Better Together and I've already pre-ordered it. Thank so you. congratulations on all your book deals and your career in general. I just feel so proud of you even though I don't know you. If that Thank makes you sense. so much. But um, me and Bobo here, <laughs> we want to know, are you going to have any pets in your any of your novels? <laughs> I haven't been able to get pets into the plot yet. I think maybe eventually my main character will have a pet, but this third book, there's no room for a pet. One story, one day, <laughs> a pet wouldn't be relevant. My question is, how do you make the voices and the characters in this new book completely different than your first two books? Um, do you have any tips or tricks on how to distinguish them. This was something that I worked really hard on in the beginning was getting into their separate heads. What really helped me was writing these different flashbacks to create the layers of their character. That's my biggest tip. Like write scenes from your character's childhood so you can get into their head. Music really helped. Like whatever music felt like this character, having that in the background really helps. And then reading it through, you start to notice if they said something that maybe they wouldn't say, take it out. Giving each of your characters also in the beginning, like, like this person's kind of like this person in my head. If you associate them with like a personality type that you know, that you've known in your life, you've known so many different kinds of people, it's easier to slip into their vernacular because you know how they talk, you know how they act. Giving them different aspects of someone you've observed in real life is very helpful to start off your character. And again, then they come into their own the more you write, the more you learn about them. You know, Siri, she's a lot more internal in her thought process and she's very anxious in different ways. Her chapters are more like internal struggle and Jamie is more loud and outspoken and she kind of just says whatever the fuck she wants with no filter. Her chapters would have a lot of dialogue. They think in different ways, but at the same time, they're sisters. So there are little similarities between the two because they do come from the same two people. <laughs> hey, Christine. Hi. So I was wondering, right, where did you uh, get the good vibes from? Like, how do you keep the good vibes flowing <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis? Because I just truly enjoy watching your videos and you Thank make really you. good content. So yeah, I was just wondering, like, you know, how the good vibes going? I, you know, the good vibes basically aren't there all the time. I try to stay positive, but you know, we live in a world where, you know, you can't keep the good vibes 24 seven. So when I'm feeling excited and happy, and usually it's like after I've done some yoga or I just went on a walk before this, I'm like, okay, I'm happy, I'm excited, and I wanna share these feelings, I wanna share the stuff that's been going on, and I know I can talk about it in a happy way because I'm feeling good. This is like a really nice question to get, and I wish I had a better answer. I've been watching you since 
Percy Jackson. So in Again But Better, you talked about Harry Potter. I don't know what you're going to talk about in Better Together, but in your third book, what do you think is going to be that pop culture reference? That you're for Better Together, about? there are definitely pop culture references for specifically like one background foundation fandom. And for book three, there definitely is like a foundational background fandom that will be obvious. <laughs> but I can't tell you yet. But we'll get there and I'm excited to get there because it's going to be so exciting to talk about it. I love your cardigan. I'm wondering if you have come in with the same problem that I'm having right now. I've written two books. My first book didn't take off. My second book I love so much. Just my mind tells me it's not good. I shouldn't have wrote it. And it needs so much work. But in actuality, I love my book. I love how it is. I don't think that there's really anything that needs to be fixed because I worked so hard on it. But my mind's telling, my mind's telling me that it's not good. And I'm wondering if you came within, with the same issues with your first two books, or the new book you're writing, if you've had trouble with dealing with that mentality of it not going to be good enough. This is such a relatable question. Thank you for asking it. I have definitely, definitely felt that way. And it's such a terrible feeling. And it's when the book is done and I've handed it in that it comes because it's like you can't do any more work on it. And especially after you put out your first book, you feel you've gone through that like wave of judgment on something that you love so much and you put so much work into. Because obviously not everyone's going to love it. And it doesn't matter how many people express how much they enjoy it. And you see comments from people that don't like your book. Those end up sinking into your skin. They come up when you're in your dark places with your next book. I completely relate to how you're feeling. This book has been such a roller coaster. I love it so much. And then I'll have these days where I'm like, what if this isn't good enough? What if I think it's good right now, but what if it's not good tomorrow? <laughs> I had the same things. And then I'll come back around and be like, wow, I love this. Why am I thinking this way? Like I've put so much work into this. I've put so much heart into this. Why are you thinking this way? And then another day will come and you get those feelings again. It's so frustrating and I think they were heightened so much because of the year we've had, the year the world has had. Again, my anxiety has never been higher and I think so many of our anxieties have never been worse. Right now I'm in a good place again, but I'm anticipating the being in that really dark imposter place as this comes out and I'm just trying to stay away from anything that could put me in that place right now. I think it's just part of the authoring process. I was talking to Colleen Hoover about this when I did an event with her. I was like, so when does this stop? Like, when does it get easier to write a book without all this like self doubt and feeling like you're not good enough? And she's like, that happens to me every book. So and I was like, oh no. <laughs> I'm thinking like you have to get better at just separating that from you and your process. Because if you're passionate about your story, again, and I have to keep telling myself this sometimes, but if you're passionate about your story and you love it, someone else is going to love it too. You're not alone in your struggles. Other people have had it and they're gonna relate to it and they're gonna feel what you felt when you read it and wrote it. I just keep telling myself that, keep telling yourself that. You got this. Congratulations on finishing your second book. Was the writing process more or less stressful than your previous other books? For book three so far, it's been less stressful than book two. And for book two though, it was the most stressful thing ever in the history of the world. Much more stressful than book one. And I feel like I don't have enough to compare it to to really answer this question in a real way because I haven't done more than one book yet on a contract deadline. So we'll see how book three goes. And if book three is also like book two, then maybe it's just always like that on a contract deadline. <laughs> I think the most stressful part of book one by far was putting out the book because again, it feels so vulnerable. It's such an internal, personal thing writing a book. You're alone and you're in your head for months and months at a time. And then all of a sudden you're letting these other people into your brain. It's very scary. The most stressful part of book two was like everything in book two. Hi, Christine. Hi. My book writing question is when you're not feeling a scene that you're writing, do you go forward and do a different scene or do you keep writing through it. If I'm not feeling the scene and I know it's a scene that I don't have to have be in this setting and be done in this way, then I'll table it and go have a think and be like, okay, why aren't I liking this scene? Why aren't I having fun with it? Can I take what they're doing in a different direction and will that make me more excited about it? Sometimes you're not feeling it because it's like hard to write that scene and you just write it again and again until you feel like you're getting the emotion right. And that type of scene, I'll just push through and keep going. Can I just say, I'm just enjoying seeing you 
all like speak IRL so much. Maybe I should do this for one of my virtual launches, like take questions from you guys so I can see your faces like through Instagram and be broadcasting somewhere else because this is so cool. That's something that I wanted to ask you guys about. I am planning with my publisher a virtual tour. I'd love to know if there's something specific if you've attended any author tours this past year. Like if there's something specific that was done that you really enjoyed, please let me know because I'd love to incorporate anything that you really personally enjoyed and found to be a fun experience. As per past tradition, I'm bringing back a song from my writing playlist that I have been listening to. I don't, like, I'm just making this book three writing playlist. I could tell you, like, the first songs on it were just, like, the score from Dickinson. <laughs> wow. I put that on and I wanted to fly into the book. Writer stories always inspire me and watching Dickinson just made me want to write. The show is absolutely excellent. Book three legit has one song on the playlist because I haven't even, like, actually been adding the songs. I've been listening to the playlist yet. And that is Meet Me in the Orchard. Ah! Damn, that's some good shit. The other thing I've been listening to is the new AJR album. And it's all like one big mashup in my brain because I just had it on the background and repeat. So to conclude today, thank you for sending in your questions if you sent in an Instagram video. And I'm sorry I didn't get to more. And I'm sorry that I didn't get to more of the written questions. I screenshotted a bunch of them so I could save them for next video. This is out. The paperback is out. If you enjoyed the bonus chapter, please let me know. Better Together is pre-orderable from the bookstore that you like to buy stuff from. But if you want a signed copy you can order from two different places there's a Barnes & Noble special edition and all of those copies will be signed that edition has Siri on the cover it's like a Siri edition and Jamie on the back cover and it has an extra chapter which is an epilogue to the epilogue that is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition it is linked in the description below if you want a signed regular edition with Jamie on the cover you can order through a really cool LA indie bookshop called book soup there's a link for that in the description or on christinerichier.com if you order from book soup you can get a personalized signed edition I'm gonna be going into book soup and personalizing signing all of the books that are ordered through them and they ship internationally so if you're international and you want a signed copy of the book you can order through book soup all of those will be hardcover copies this is an arc and as I said before if you have the arc but you're willing to wait for the hard copy to read the book I'd rather you read the final version I want the finished version to be the version that people read because it's different every version is different pre-order links for better together are in the description there is an audiobook you can pre-order the audiobook Brittany Presley who did the audio for Gamma better is back. She'll be voicing Jamie in the Better Together audiobook. Uh, I'll talk more about that in my audiobook video, which will be coming sometime in the future. I'm so excited. Thank you for watching. I'm Christine, and I will see you next time.